Christ is in our midst. Welcome to Spiritual Calisthenics. <clears throat> Today, on July 26th, we commemorate the memory of St. Paraskevi, the righteous martyr of Rome, as well as the holy higher martyrs from Olaos, from Ipas, and Homocrates. Regarding the life of St. Paraskevi, St. Paraskevi, the Parthenon martyr, was born in a village near Rome during the reign of Hadrian. Her parents were pious Christians, Agathonikos and Politeia. Her parents prayed fervently for a child, and God finally blessed their piety. They gave great honor to Friday, the day of our Lord's suffering. Being born on this day, her parents named her Paraskevi. Friday in Greek literally means preparation. St. Paraskevi obtained an excellent education, both secular and scriptural instruction. She was also very knowledgeable in the field of philosophy. Bolstered by her Christian upbringing, she often conversed with other women about Christianity, trying to strengthen their faith in, their new, in this new religion. Many distinguished families wanted this beautiful, educated, and rich woman to marry their sons. Her understanding and kindness made her even more desirable. However, having a higher goal in life, St. Paraskevi rejected any marriage proposal. When she was 20 years old, both her parents died, leaving her as the sole heir of the family fortune. St. Paraskevi did not use her fortune for herself. Filled with the spirit of Christ and Christian ideals, she sold all her worldly possessions, using the money to relieve human suffering. But there was a portion retained to a community treasury that supported a home for reverent virgins who stayed in a kenovium, a type of commune like a contemporary monastery. These women prayed and fasted doing charitable works. They preached primarily to Hebrew and idol-worshipping women, giving them an opportunity to learn about Christian salvation. She left Rome at the age of 30 and began her holy mission, passing through many cities and villages. St. Paraskevi's activities occurred during a period that the Jews and Romans persecuted the Christian religion with greatest intensity. Antonius Pius, from 138 to 161, ruled Rome at this time, and he did not execute Christians without a trial. She was not caught immediately or put to death. Instead, Antonius protected Christians against the blind mania of the Jewish and Roman inhabitants. Christians could only be brought to trial if another citizen lodged a formal complaint against them. Antonius, however, had to repeal this law because of the many disasters which had befallen Rome and which were blamed on the Christians. Strong in faith, learning, and eloquence, Paraskevi spoke persuasively to her fellow Roman citizens, leading them from idolatry to faith in Christ. Eventually, Antonius heard of St. Paraskevi's holy mission. Upon her return to Rome, several Jews filled, filed complaints against her, and Antonius summoned her to his palace to question her. Attracted by her beauty and humility, he tried with kind words to make her denounce her faith, even promising to marry her and make her empress. Angered by her refusal, he had a steel helmet lined with nails compressed on her head like a vice. It had no effect on the saint, and many who witnessed this miracle converted to Christianity. Thrown into prison, Paraskevi asked God to give her the strength to face the terror that awaited her. Antonius again continued her torch by having her hung by her hair and at the same time burning her hand and arms with torches. The saint suffered greatly, but had the will not to submit to pain. Antonius then prepared a large cauldron of oil and tar, boiled the mixture, and then had Paraskevi immersed in it. Miraculously, she stood in it as if she was being refreshed rather than burned. Angered, Antonius thought that she was using witchery to keep the contents cooled. Antonius then approached the cauldron only to be blinded by the hot steam and searing emissions coming from the area. At this moment, the mighty emperor asked for the interventions of St. Paraskevi to heal him from his affliction, to which he responded, Emperor, the Christian God is healing you from the blindness that was given to you as a punishment. Immediately, he regained his sight. Humbled by the miracle, he freed the saint, allowing her to continue her missionary activity and ended all persecutions against Christians throughout the Roman Empire. So isn't it amazing that this wonderful saint ended persecutions against Christians in the entire Roman Empire? For a time, obviously, it came back. From this episode, it is clear the Christians of St. Paraskevi had the intercessional ability to help people with visual ailments. This is one of the reasons why in many icons, as you see the one above me, uh, she is holding eyes, and many people go to her to receive healing for vision. This period was brief. After Antonius' death in 161, a plague broke out throughout their empire. Romans took it as a sign from their gods that they were angered by the tolerance of Christianity. Under Antonius' successor, Marcus Aurelius, laws dealing with non-believers were, were kanged and persecutions against Christians resumed. Despite these dangers, Paraskevi persevered in her missionary endeavors, spreading the gospel wherever she traveled. By authority of Emperor Aurelius, the provincial eparchs 
Acephalus and Tarasios captured St. Patiskevi. Having refueled Acephalus' demand to sacrifice the pagan gods, she was thrown into a snake pit. Saint made the sign of the cross over the serpent, and the serpent perished. Asclepius had heard of the saint's previous miracles, realized that a great and mighty power guarded Parascavi, and decided to set her free, while Asclepius and his court were all converted. Tarasios, however, was less tolerant. Saint Parascavi was tied and beaten and afterwards imprisoned in a huge rock placed on her chest. She prayed to Christ to help her to be strong. The next morning, St. Padaskevi was taken willingly to the temple of Apollo. Everyone praised Tarasius, thinking that he had succeeded in breaking St. Padaskevi's faith. However, upon entering the temple, the saint raised her hand and made the sign of the cross. Suddenly, a loud noise was heard, and all of the idols of the temple were destroyed. Priests and idolaters dragged her from the altar, beat her, and pushed her out of the temple. Priests demanded that Tarasius kill Padaskevi. She was convicted and condemned to death by beheading. It was customary to give the condemned their last wish. She asked to be left alone for a few moments so that she might pray for the last time. Afterwards, the Roman soldiers returned and executed the saint. Many healing miracles occurred as a result of St. Potiskevi's divine intervention. It is said that merely coming into contact with the dirt of her grave, faithful crippled could walk, demonized would return to health, and the infertile would bear children. Most importantly, St. Potiskevi healed the blindness of the Roman Empire the Roman Emperor Antonius Pius, while she was in the while she was in the heated cauldron, her merciful disposition to her tormentor has made her an intercessor to the saint for the healing of eye ailment. Her remains were eventually taken to Constantinople, where they were venerated by the faithful to this very day. Propitor calling O champion Paraskevi, you worshipped with the readiness of their name bears. For an abode you obtained faith, which is your namesake. Wherefore you pour forth healing and intercede for our souls, O most majestic one. We have discovered your te te temple to be a spiritual clinic where all the faithful resoundingly honor you, O famed and venerable martyr of Padaskevi. We also celebrate Saints Hermalaus, the holy martyr, and his holy companion. Now, Saint Hermalaus is notable because he is the one who baptized Saint Pantelemon, who we celebrate tomorrow. Saint Hermalaus and those with him were priests of the church in Nicomedia, living in hiding after the Emperor Maximian had burnt to death the 20,000 martyrs of Nicomedia. It was Hermalaus who converted Saint Pantelemon to Christ. St. Pantelemon was seized as a Christian and was asked by Maximian who it was that had turned him to the idols. The saint, enlightened by God that at the time of his teacher's martyrdom was also at hand, revealed to Maximian that it was Hermalaus the priest. Hermalaus was taken with Saints Hermippus and Hermocrates, and when they had confessed Christ to be the only true God, they were beheaded in the year 305. St. Hermalaus is one of the holy unmercenary, similar to his uh, disciple and uh, person that he converted to Christ, St. Pantelemon. Your martyrs, O Lord, in their courageous contest for you, received the prize of crowns of incorruption from life and from you, our mortal God. For since they possessed your strength, they cast down the tyrants and wholly destroyed the demon's strengthless presumption. O Christ God, by their prayers, save our souls, since you are merciful. O wise Hermolaus, the God-bearing Hermippius, and August Hermocrates, as sacred priests of the Most High, you who offered the unbloody sacri un sacrifice rightly were yourselves stained with your own blood, as sacrifices offered up to Christ the one God. Now with boldness we pray you that all be saved. From St. Paul's letter to the Galatians regarding St. Padaskevi, Brethren, before faith came, we were confined under the law, kept under the restraint until faith should be revealed, so that the law was our custodian until Christ came, that we might be justified by faith. But now that faith has come, we are no longer under a custodian. For in Christ Jesus you are all sons of God, through faith. For as many as you were baptized in Christ have put on Christ forever. There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither slave nor free, there is neither male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. You are Christ. And you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to the promise, because you are children of faith. I mean that the heir, as long as he is a child, is no better than a slave, who is the owner of all the estate, but he is under guardians and trustees until the day set by the Father. So with us, when we were children, we were slaves to the elemental spirits of the universe. When the time had fully come, God sent forth his Son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as sons. So St. Potiskevi brings us that true wisdom of God. So we are no longer under the elemental spirits. We are no longer worshipping gods or creation itself. We are worshipping the one true God. She opens our eyes that we may prepare ourselves, as her name suggests, to receive the Lord our God. In the Gospel according to St. Mark, At that time a great crowd followed Jesus and thronged about him. And there was a woman who had a flow of blood for twelve years and had suffered much under many physicians. And had spent all that she had and was neither better but rather grew worse. She had heard the report about Jesus and came up behind him in a crowd and touched his garments, for he said, she said, 
If I touch even his garments, I will be made well. And immediately the hemorrhage ceased. I felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. And Jesus, perceiving in himself that power had gone forth from him, immediately turned about in the crowd and said, Who touched my garments? The disciples said to him, You see the crowd pressing around you, and yet you say, Who touched me? They looked around to see who had done it. The woman, knowing what had been done to her, came in fear and trembling and fell down before him, and told the whole truth, and said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace, healed of your disease. This is the gospel that is often used for women saints to highlight faith. This woman who touched the fringe of Jesus Christ's garment is a woman of faith. St. Padaskevi is a woman of faith. We must emulate that. Hope that you've enjoyed today's spiritual calisthenics. Have a blessed and wonderful day. Thank you.